Hi, I'm Wendy Gardner. I think pin tucks are a really interesting feature on a garment. Use a twin needle and you can make them quickly and easily. I love the fact that with a twin needle you get different gaps between the needles, which is what this measurement is. Here you can see the two extremes between the needles. So this one is 1.6 millimetres apart and then this one is 6 millimetres apart. So you'd use the wider one for hemming and the narrow one for pin tucks or decorative stitching. But you can also get different twin needles for different fabrics. So you have universal for woven, but you have a twin embroidery needle for your decorative stitches, metal fill for metallic threads, ballpoint for stretch fabrics. Pin tucking is one of my favourite techniques with a twin needle. I'm just going to show you how to do that. For pin tucking, I'm going to use one with a gap of two millimetres apart. So you've got two needles on one shank. And like every other needle, it's got a flat section which goes to the back and it's inserted into the needle holder in exactly the same way as any other needle. So insert it as high as it will go, tighten the screw by hand, and then with your screwdriver to do that final turn. Now sadly, with these needles, you cannot use an automatic needle threader. You have to thread by hand. I've also put two threads through the top, so put those through together, and when they get to the last hook above the needle, if you've got a hook either side, great, put one behind each side, if not, you just hook one behind that final hook and the other one you leave hanging loose. But I have a hook either side for this. So that keeps them separated just above the needle. Hand thread it through the eyes of the needles. So put something right behind the eye of the needle and you can see the eye nice and clearly, one at a time. I'm using a pin tuck foot as well. This has grooves on the underside and depending on the foot you have, it might have five, it might have seven. You do the first pin tuck down the center, and then you move that one along to sit into one of these grooves so that the next pin tuck you sew will be perfectly parallel. So my first tuck, I'm going to sew down a marked line, centering that line in place. I've also increased the tension to as high as it will go. In this case, that's nine. Having stitched my first tuck, I can position that into one of the grooves on the underside of the foot. So here I'm going to put it into the end groove so I can stitch my next tuck. And the more you stitch, the more they seem to gather up. Here's my finished pin tucks, which have a lovely raised feel, very delicate, very good on lightweight fabrics. On the underside, the bobbin thread crisscrosses between the two top threads to get a sort of zigzag, which is actually what helps pull up the top and give it that tiny little ridge. If you're going to do this on an existing garment, I suggest buying something slightly bigger. For instance, this example in blue, I've pin tucked across the front because every little tuck takes in a little bit of fabric. If you're going to do it on a brand new garment that you're making, then what I suggest is that you draw around the pattern piece, but don't cut it out. Do the pin tucks where you want to and then cut it out. Make sure that the pattern piece still fits or indeed make it a little larger if necessary. But that's not all you can do with a twin needle. You can also do some really lovely decorative stitching. And it looks particularly nice if you've got two different colours in the top threads. Just check with your manuals to which stitches you can use or try it out by hand. So select your stitch, check the width. Under five millimetres is usually fine. And you just turn the balance wheel on the side by hand through the whole stitch sequence to make sure that neither needle touches the side of the presser foot or indeed the throat plate. And then off you go, have fun with them. So another application for a twin needle is to use it to do some hemming. This is when I would use a twin needle with a gap of between four or six millimeters. And then you get two perfectly parallel rows. And on the underside, you have a zigzag as before, which goes between the two top threads. And this, I would then loosen the tension so that you don't gather the fabric between the needles. So keep a selection of twin needles in your workbox and be prepared to get creative.